Flare, flare, flare! Oh, oh, yeah, good That's not good. That's not good at all. Ay, ay, ay. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to the one minute debrief, meaning I only get 60 seconds to debrief an airplane mishap, incident, or anything else that is aviation related and somewhat out of the ordinary. So, what are we waiting for? And let's get started. Okay, we have an Airbus A350 by. Coming in. Everything seems good. All right, all right. Oh, oh, oh my God, that was wow. I made. Why are you not letting the nose come down? I'm surprised that's not touching. Why are you deflecting the elevator so much? Wow. What are you doing? That was pretty gnarly, man. Okay, that's that very unusual. All right, let's just rewind this here. There's one thing that I immediately spotted. Okay, I believe uh, the flare was not really initiated because you don't really see a break in the descent rate. And then um, I assume maybe there was a bit of wind that sort of caught under the right-hand wing that pushed the plane over to the left-hand side. That's why the left main gear touched down first. And then here, this, wow, this is so close to a tail strike. Ay, ay, ay. But also, now it sort of bounces. Now the right uh, main gear has touched down. And just look at the engine, how close that is to the ground. Uh, very, very scary here. But what really stands out to me is now, look at the deflection of the elevator. Why are they keeping the elevator pitched up and not bring the nose down. The nose wheel has to come down to literally maneuver the plane and keep it on the center line. But for like a couple of seconds after or during rollout, they still maintain a pitch up. It makes no sense to me. That's that debrief, sorry. I briefly have to interrupt to announce an important information. Do you want to become a pilot, but you don't know where to start? You are not alone. I receive hundreds of messages every day asking me where to start and how to get the required licenses as cheap and fast as possible. So over the last 10 months, I got to work and I created the Future Pilots Masterclass in order to give you a step-by-step -step guide to help you to fulfill your dream of becoming a pilot as easy and effortlessly as possible. Now I am informing you now that it's launching very soon. So sign up for my early bird list and you'll be the first to know when we officially launch and you get three absolute massive bonuses you shouldn't miss out. So click the link in the description box below now and save your spot. Exciting. <laughs> okay, let's continue. All right, Martinez 747 Cargo. Your flare, mate. Where's your flare? Oh, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, let's just have a look at that again. It's clear that there's absolutely no break in the descent rate, no break whatsoever. The elevator's not even deflecting. Okay, here, here it starts, but it's way too late. He should have. Uh, this is probably. 10 feet, maybe 20 feet. And as soon as it goes 50, 40, you break it, break the descent rate, start the flare at 30, you throttle back, and then you sort of just hold it and let it come, you know, touch down. But there's no break in nothing. He just literally just flattened it onto the ground. Ah, that, that's, ay, ay, oof. Oh, look at the, look at the um, inboard flaps. That was, oh, not nice, not nice at all. So in this video, it's kind of clear that um, the flare is, has not been initiated. There was no real flare. Um, the flare generally is sort of at 50 feet, you get sort of a wake up call, okay, I need to initiate my flare now. You break the initial descent rate. At 30 feet, you throttle back, and then you just sort of hold it and let her come, let the main gear touch down, and then bring in flare and landing. But here, it, to me, the descent rate never changed. It was always the same. And that is quite a high descent rate on a three degree glide slope, um, depending obviously on the ground speed. But uh, all right, 747 400 taking off. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. Uh, the <laughs> 
it can happen. I mean, the, the outboard engines are as powerful as the inboard engines. Um, I think the, definitely the gardener has to come around for that uh, renewal of the side of the runway. Um, by the looks of it, it does look as if it is a relatively narrow runway, meaning that the outboard engines one and four were hanging over the runway. As soon as the, obviously she applies full take of thrust, and then starts rotating. The jet blast is obviously pointed towards the ground. It looks to me as if they were like refurbishing the side of the runway um, with sort of grass strips because it looks like one of those football pitches that you have, that grass that just sort of rolls out because it's in like these stripes and these chunks. They haven't really rooted into the ground yet. So <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I guess another day's work for the gardener. <laughs> oh boy. All right, 7 for 7, 300. Ooh, ooh, way too early for that. Ooh. What? Yeah. Oh, no! Wow, what's with the rudder deflection? Not hell! Look at the rudder! What are you doing, buddy? Ay, 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 ay. Oh, still, still, rudder! What is happening? Oh, my word. Okay, good. Uh, just judging by its first view, there is a lot of rudder use, which is unusual. I did spot the windsock uh, on the right-hand side, and uh, judging by the smoke coming off the tires, there has been quite some significant uh, crosswind because the, the smoke immediately sort of is moved to the left of the plane. Um, so if we go back into it, I realize here, so they start the flare too early, it's here. That is way too high. We're still, this looks like 80 feet or even, even higher. Then you see they are pointing the noise, nose down again to counteract the early flare. Then it goes up again. Then it goes down again, up again, and then they touch down. So there's multiple flare scenarios, um, but not a steady one. That obviously created a bit of a destabilized approach in the last couple of seconds. Then the right hand gear touches down and then she bounces up to the left hand side. But now look at the deflection. So because of the crosswind, you would apply left rudder to bring the plane onto the uh, center line and right aileron at the same time. So you're counteracting for the crosswind, but you're lining up the plane onto the center line with the rudder. But if you look at it, the rudder is going in all directions. So at the moment it's going to the left, but then it goes significantly to the right, significantly. Sure, I mean, if you are not on the center line, you feel as if the plane is, you know, swerving off to the left. Yes, you, you would apply right rudder, but it's, it's so, it's like maximum deflection nearly. And then it goes to the left and to the right and to the left. And it, you see how the plane is sort of bouncing its way uh, down the runway and then the nose wheel comes down way too late again what we learn out of this is less is more apply one decent d crab and put in the ailerons and the rudder simultaneously on the runway and then keep it in that position as uh, after the plane has touched down because this, the wind can still sort of catch under, under your wing and then sort of give you that tilt to the left um, which is probably the case here so very sketchy but you know all, all good in the end Oh yeah, it's one of those Cessnas. A Cessna 210, 210. They have that really flimsy landing gear and it seems as if the landing gear did not extend, uh, not even the nose wheel. Okay, good. All right, he's landing on grass. Yes, he's landing on grass. Oh, mm, nicely done. Yeah, <laughs> save the plane. Okay, they get out. Perfect. I would have cut the engine. I just pulled the mixture to cut off and then just, you know, you can do that more or less in flare or maybe in a hundred feet, just cut it off and then you can save yourself an engine because that engine is definitely damaged, including the propeller and everything. That's gonna be very, very costly. Airbus AT80 coming in for landing. Flare. Still flaring. <laughs> Why is it not touching down? Oh my god! Alright, touchdown, and yes, we ran out of rumble. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, good. Go around. It's beautiful to look at, but it's not nice for the pilots, I can guarantee you that. A long flare is 
is a horrible situation. You come in and everything seems stabilized and all is good and then you've throttled back so the, the engines aren't idle as you are in the flare and the plane just won't touch down. I mean, I've had similar experiences where the plane, it, just, it would just float and float and float and float. It, it, I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can't push downwards. Um, I mean, and it seems also that they didn't lose speed because that's the next thing. So as, as soon as the flare becomes longer and longer, the airspeed drops because you've set the engines to idle uh, and then you literally just fall to the ground. But this wasn't the case and I think they just floated. I mean, I assume that the, the Airbus A380 wing is a fantastic gliding plane as well. And, you know, a best decision, obviously, is, is because they ran out of runway uh, or, you know, went way beyond the touchdown zone that uh, the best course of action is obviously to perform a go-around. So, well done. Uh, it's a nice example of a very long flare. <laughs> what is he doing? Mate, what? Why? Why? I guarantee you that the air traffic controller did not give him a clearance like that. No way. Okay, the first thing that comes to my mind is foreign object damage. As soon as that Airbus A320 by British Airways applies takeoff thrust, there's all sorts of, you know, tiny little stones on the runway that are just getting blown up and then literally sandblasting that uh, Airbus A350 by Malaysian. Um, so foreign objects could get caught into the uh, engines by the uh, Airbus A350. You could have little you know, particles entering the pitot tube uh, and any other sensors. That is just super risky and completely uncalled for. There's no reason to do that. Yeah, bad airmanship. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can say about that. All right, 777 Japan Airlines. Oh, oh, she's down. Oof. No, 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 no. I, oh, look at the rudders, look at the rudders. Oof, and, yo. <laughs> Almighty. Okay, but the looks of it, the flare is okay. It's there. He's touching down, but yet again, very likely crosswind. Um, she's bouncing around one landing gear to the other gear. Um, and then somehow, I believe in that moment, you see the, the plane has this nose up tendency. I am pretty damn sure that they already said go around thrust in that moment because there's such a pitch up momentum in that moment that you can bring it down anymore. So I, I assume either the captain uh, or the first officer has decided, okay, this is unsafe. We're gonna uh, perform a go around. Um, then she is airborne again, and I'm assuming here it looks as if they pitch down just a little bit because they are super low at speed in that moment. Obviously, the engine needs to spool up, etc., etc. The landing is already a no-go by now. They know that this is it, and obviously by t uh, applying full go-around thrust, it's over. But now it's just how they're maneuvering them themselves out of it. Now they they really have a not a pitch down attitude, but it's obvious that they are pushing her down to keep a straight and level and then whoosh as soon as the speed's there they just pull her up like at one of those air shows <laughs> it's crazy you know you're still trying to land and then either one of the captain or the the, the first officer then interferes and says go around there's a lot of forces to handle if those engines spool up with all that massive power the only way is up so you obviously trying to counteract that you don't get a tail strike so you do have to push forwards not that it's recommended but you have a pitch limit that you don't want to exceed because otherwise you'll hit the tail and it's quite obvious that they did that um sorry not hit the tail but that they were pushing her forward to keep the pitch downwards and, and prevent the tail strike. But other than that, it looks really sketchy, but you know, it worked out safe. I'm pretty sure they came around and landed safely again. All right, what do we have here? Black Hawk, yes, my favorite helicopter. And what's that, a little Pilatus? By the looks of it, okay. Whoa, ye, ye, ooh, <laughs> Jesus. Mate, what was going on? Ah, of course, of course, of course, the downwash of the helicopter. Oh, wow. Wow, wow that is bad to look at. 
Yes, do not underestimate the rotor wash of a helicopter, especially of a Blackhawk. I mean, a Blackhawk is a big and heavy helicopter. Okay, you could have argued if the Pilatus pilot should have initiated a go-around early on. You could argue why does the air traffic controller give a takeoff clearance to the Blackhawk having another airplane uh, on the approach so close. Very, very, very dangerous situation. I mean, the Pilatus has a lot of power. It's a Pratt & Whitney, the PT-6 engine in front of that. I mean, sure, they were very lucky to get themselves out of that situation because they have so much power. But those, again, are incredible forces to counteract the torque of the, the engine, the rudder inputs, the, you know, keeping her straight and level. I mean, that must have been an absolute shock to the pilot. Oh, my word. I'm pretty sure there was a stall warning going off at some point as well. Look, if you're on approach and you see any type of helicopter, it doesn't need to be a black hole. A little Robinson will do just a job. And you're coming in your little 152, just abort the landing. Just perform a go around. It's the safest course of action. All righty. That looks like an Airbus A320 Neo, just judging by the GTF engines. Yee! <laughs> Oh, Sorry, mighty. Guys, what? And he's still landing. Go away. <gasps> Buddy. Sorry. Correction. It's an Airbus oh A320. Oh, my God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That is not cool. Okay. We don't have any weather data here, obviously. But just judging by this pitch down momentum, I'm sure that that was not, you know, initiated uh, by the pilots. It very much looks as if that was some minor wind shear that actually pushed the plane downwards. The pilots counteracted. Um, to me, if the wind shear warning would have gone off, absolute clear go around. In that situation, that is unstabilized. I can guarantee you that. Um, yeah, go around, I would have believed is, is the safest course of action here. So. Yeah, but they saved it, and uh, also the landing looks a bit funky. She's on the ground, and then a, quite a tilt up momentum. Ooh, um, not great, sorry. All right, what do we have here? What? Okay, Piper Cup. What is he? Mate, what are you doing? No. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my god. <laughs> and of course the safety. What? Okay. In all fairness, that is fake. I can guarantee you that. Uh, they've planned that. No one would risk their life hanging out of the window and hand crank or hand start as... <laughs> Oh my God, what are people doing? Oh, great. Uh, yeah, uh, a Piper Cup. I mean, obviously, uh, due to the windmilling effect, it is relatively easy probably to start it. It just needs a bit of a push, and then because of the windmill, uh, the rest of the propeller get, gains the energy from the wind, and then it will start up. They turned off the engine on purpose to do that. I'm pretty sure that was not an actual engine failure. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, okay, fun video. Uh, please don't try this at home or don't try and replicate that kind of video. I'm begging you. <laughs> what do we have here? Uh, Howard. Oh, no. Oh, sh She's taken off. And it's, you can hear by the audio that the engine is quitting out. Okay. We don't know the cause for that. The engine cut out. Now, this is a really tricky situation. You've used up most of the runway. Your engine has failed. Now what? He acted correctly in the sense of pushing her down and, you know, land, try and land her on the runway again or just like try and land her straight forward. But I'm pretty sure that the startle effect of an engine cutting out as you are in climb and suddenly you use engine power, that really is a shock to the system in that moment. I'm sensing that the speed was too low to perform a decent flare and landing. And that's why 
I mean, she just comes down like a rock. It's ah, oh, gee. Uh, I think they've they've handled it the best they could have. Uh, but uh, the startle effect in an aircraft costs you seconds to just start up thinking again what to do next. So I think that was the cause here. Really, really sad. And that was the last video to debrief on that bombshell. Don't forget to sign up for the pre-order for my upcoming online course. Believe me, if you want to become a pilot, this course is an absolute must-have. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Form a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe.